Hi, I wanted to give you a key to uh, essential question number four. These are the income and cash flow statement ones. Uh, number two from the fall of 2012. So here's the setup we have. Um, we took out an advertisement um, in year one and it had a cost of $20,000. What that's going to do is that's going to show up as an increase in a, an expense in year one. Here's what the advertisement gets us. We have increased sales by $15,000 in years one and two, and then they return to the original levels in year three. So we'll show you how that's going to uh, appear on the uh, income uh, and cash flow statement just a little bit. Uh, the increase in sales meant there was an increase in accounts receivable. This is a kind of working capital by $7,000, and then it returns to the previous level in years three. So let's go ahead and find out if this is supposed to be a good idea. So first off, let's show you how we are seeing that uh, expense. So there's the $20,000 that we're uh, spending on the advertisement. And so it's a positive number. That means we have an additional expenditure that we didn't have before. And please note it happens only in year one. It doesn't happen in these other years over here. And the other part of the explanation we had is, is that it increased sales by $15,000 in years one and years two, and then it returned to previous levels. So the interpretation is, is that sales are $15,000 higher than they would have been without the advertisement, and they're $15,000 higher than they would have been without the advertisement, and then this is the return to the original level. So remember, it's the difference between the state of the world with the advertisement and the one without it, and here's returning to the original level. Now, to get down to the taxable income right here, we're just taking this increase in revenue that we have here and subtracting off each of these changes in expenses. We're taking the 15000 subtracting twenty, so we have a decrease in taxable income by $5,000 in the first year. And here we just have this increase in revenue in year two because there are no additional expenses, so we've had an increase in taxable income there, and we've got no change going on in year three. Taxes are just uh, 40%, so we're taking 40% of $5,000 and 40% of $15,000. And you're going to see this change in net income in each case. This negative means that net income is lower in the state of the world where you have the advertisement in place. And here this means that net income is higher in the state of the world when you have the ad advertisement in place versus if you hadn't done it. Now the lower part here, the cash flow statement, some of these are just repetition from what we had above. So what we're doing is we're pulling back down our net incomes that we had from above. We didn't buy any assets, so we've got no changes in depreciation that are taking place here. And here's where we deal with that working capital change. When we describe this as an increase in accounts receivable because of all these sales. So this right here, the $7,000, represents us having to have more cash tied up in all this accounts receivable because of the increased sales. So we don't have that cash on hand. But then after the sales fade off, as they do in the second year, we'll go ahead and free up that cash again. So here's the additional working capital required, and here's that quote-unquote working capital uh, release that takes place afterwards. So in order to get the net cash flow, what we have here is just adding these guys up. So we see in the first year a decrease in net cash of $10,000, again, versus the state of the world without the advertising expense. In the second year, we have an increase in net cash flow of $9,000, again, versus the state of the world without the advertisement. And then in the last year, when our $7,000 comes back to us, we, we get this back. Now, I've calculated the present worth at 5%, so I've just taken this negative $10,000, added this positive 9 divided by 1.05, and this positive 7,000 divided by 1.05 squared to get the present value right here. And this looks to be a good investment because it has positive present worth. So, there is an explanation to essential question number 4, version 2 in the fall of 2012.